Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the comments to previous videos, people asked me to do strange things to SLS, like add Falcon 9 boosters to them, even though I know that other people have done that in videos before. Or add the F1B uh, boosters that Dynetics proposed, even though Dynetics has already proposed it and we know what those would do. And that seems like somewhat a waste of my talents. Uh, to just do what other people have already done. So, I have a different proposal for you that is a little bit more in line with my own way of doing things. And to that end, may I present Raptor Flyback Boosters. Plus my, of course, uh, two-engine shuttle mice. So, these are boosters with six Raptor engines by SpaceX in them. They are, the boosters are specifically shaped to carry those six engines. You can see it's a snug fit. Uh, RCS thrusters on the tail and on the nose, uh, filled with methane and oxygen, an appropriate size to contain about 350 tons of methane and oxygen, and that allows for a burn time of 1 minute and 54 seconds. With a little bit of throttling, you can get that to the exact burn time of the SRBs, but it's a little bit short and we could probably just keep it short. And uh, the reason for that being that, well, it's lighter overall because the fuel, the um, engines are more efficient. It's better specific impulse. And so it'll get a little bit further. And as you can see, right at that point where it ends up is where the space shuttle main engines or RS-25Ds, whatever you want to call them, uh, get a thrust weight ratio of one basically. And so they can carry it uh, for the rest of the way. The flyback boosters, I thought about putting jet engines on them, but we'll see how they do right now. They are pretty heavy. Uh, the tank itself is 22 tons, uh, but then there's all the wings and the landing gear and the engines. It's more than 40 tons per booster. So that's a pretty heavy amount, but then again, the SRBs are pretty heavy too, and they have less efficiency. So, yeah, but so I could have probably made them larger, and that would have given us a little bit more uh, payload capacity. I might consider that. I might just straight up tweak scale them up. And then of course, uh, these are just B9 procedural wings. And so I can scale them to whatever I want. And yeah, I did of course put the wings on in the SPH and check that the aerodynamics were okay. Um, FAR was okay with it uh, up to about Mach 4, but past Mach 4, it's not so good. So, yeah, but we don't expect that the boosters are going to hang out for that long. Incidentally, uh, it looks like they have tiling on the bottom. That was just for looks. Well, that's also for other purposes later on. But um, really, the boosters don't need a full HRSI tiling at the bottom. Uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I haven't tested this out yet. I don't know exactly how fast they're going. But my expectation is that they're going to be going Mach 4-ish by the end, by the time we decouple them. And so they should not need that much heat shielding. They should be more like, you know, SR-71-ish kind of thing. All right. And uh, of course, we have the shuttle mouse and the other shuttle mouse. The clearance on the wings was a little bit difficult. You can see I've actually tilted the Raptor flyback boosters here. Oh, and just in case you don't know, I modeled them in Blender, of course. The trapezoidal shape is just a stylish thing. I don't know if that's the best shape for them, by the way. I just thought that they'd be a nifty shape. But you can see it's tilted out like this, just so that it avoids the wingtips of the little shell mouse. So yeah, that is a thing. So this is just going to be a uh, payload capacity test in this video, and then we'll uh, see about it returning home uh, in another video. Actually, uh, home might be a stretch, but we'll see. So here we have a payload, and this plus the core plus the antenna is 42 tons. Now, in the upper stage here, which is the EUS, the normal EUS, I've underfueled it to 60%. And that's because that's exactly how much I need to transfer to the moon. So 3,183 will be enough to transfer to the moon. Uh, so that means they'll have a translunar injection mass, payload mass of 42 tons. 
which is about what you'd expect from a Saturn V. Are we going to be able to do that? I don't know. Uh, that's why we're testing. I would like that, but it's actually a tough, tough thing for it because of all the reusability stuff we've got going down there. The extra structure that we're carrying now. If uh, it was just like throwaway boosters with six Raptors on each side and then the SSMEs or RS-25s at the bottom of the tank, then it'd be a no-brainer. It'd be obviously able to do 42 tons to the moon. But like this, maybe not. So anyway, this was my idea. I didn't like the Falcon 9 boosters because Falcon 9 isn't a particularly efficient engine and I mean you know it's it's better than SRBs but uh, the, I mean the Merlin 1Ds is better than the SRBs but you could get better engines right I mean especially if you're gonna recover them and same thing with the F1Bs the F1Bs you can't even reuse necessarily so I would like one of the methane oxygen engines to be the booster engine. So either the Raptors or the BE-4, get them back, reuse them. They're meant for reuse, so it makes sense to me, and they'll be more efficient than the Merlin 1D. So I like that better. Plus, there's the whole business of having to light 36 Merlin 1Ds. Uh, that's painful. So anyway, let's see. Let's see how this works. Okay. So here we are in Brownsville, actually, and that is what it looks like on the outside. So they're sort of cute, all these little boosters. Could we have gone with four of the Raptor flyback boosters? I don't think so, and that's because, well, it's, it's extra structure. You know, instead of uh, putting the Raptors on the bottom, putting the SSMEs, that simplify the fabrication uh, because you don't have two different uh, systems that you're talking about but you'd have to put more heat shielding, uh, it'd be heavier overall, so and so extra dry mass, and I'll cut into payload capacity, so I don't know. Depends on how you feel about that. So, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. So basically 1.4 uh, thrust weight ratio at the start. It's a little bit shady around here. Kind of strange seeing basically four little planes strapped to the side of a rocket like this. Oh, uh, apparently he wants to roll that way. Why? I, I don't even have it holding roll. Why does it even care about roll? I don't know. Strange. Thought I'd only care about roll if I told it to care about roll. Interesting fact, by the way, the Raptor flyback boosters are, of course, heavier than my Shinkansen space plane. Um, and that's purely because they're filled with fuel, right? They're also fairly big when you think about it. If you can imagine, you know, this whole orange structure is bigger than the shuttle external tank. So they're a fair they're probably about the same length as the Shinkansen, maybe more. Okay. A little bit less shady now. I went with the 10 meter fairing uh, just to see. We do want to reserve a little bit of fuel in the flyback boosters so they can control themselves at the altitudes that we decouple them. If not a whole lot is necessary. Putting on jet engines would be nice if we can swing that. Don't have to be really powerful jet engines, after all they only operate when the booster is empty, so we're talking about having to deal with 40 tons. Now, where the heck the flyback boosters are gonna land, I don't know. From Brownsville, it's probably actually less convenient. If we launch from Cape Canaveral, I would expect them to be able to get to Bermuda. 
not Bermuda, uh, the Bahamas. If we could get a uh, landing location at the Bahamas, that'd be nice. Um, if we were aiming for ISS inclination, it'd be easier, because we'd have the entire eastern seaboard to land at, but that is not part of the plan for SLS. These are still the 2,000 kilonewton raptors, so not... Okay, let me shut them down there and separate. So we reserved a little bit of fuel, as expected. And they are off. So we're not very far away from our launch site. Turning around would be a little bit difficult, though. In other words, trying to do a return to launch site, we didn't reserve enough fuel for that. So here we are with the shuttle mice again. We did try them out in, during a live stream and we brought the one shuttle mouse down but it crash landed. So that wasn't great. But that was due to the fact that I didn't know what the stall speed was. So I was able to make it through re-entry and everything. Lift issue on the Raptor flyback boosters is probably much better than on the shell mice. There's a lot more surface area going on with the flyback boosters. Well, we probably want to ditch the fairings before we get to the next stage. The next stage is locked, right? So we want to. The reason it's locked is not only to stop the clamps from refueling it, but also because we wanted to reserve all that fuel. This is supposed to make it to orbit. And that's best for the shuttle mice. The shuttle mice, I call them shuttle mice, uh, the two engine mice uh, are not very good at coming back down from suborbital trajectories. The little mice have MMH and NTO of their own to deorbit themselves and come back. We could underfuel those if we knew that we were going to be slightly suborbital, you know, just enough for them to come back and then we could use the EUS to finish orbit. So there, there is that possibility. If it turns out that we're really, really close. Alright, 100 kilometers. I'll ditch the fairings here. Ooh, they're a little bit vigorous, aren't they? Uh, it looks like we'll be a little bit short, but not too far off. Yep, uh, well... We will be short, but not too much short. Uh, so we're talking about close to 42 tons. We'll try it one more time, and we will see whether we can... I'll keep the MMH and NTO. It's a lot of M MMH and NTO, to be honest, but uh, we'll keep it as is, and we'll just reduce the payload and see what we can do about the amount of fuel in the US. It's probably somewhere between 50 and 60% that we need there. So let's take a look. Let me try and get some good numbers. Okay, so I've reduced the amounts in here by uh, to 98% of their previous amount. And so with a 40 ton payload up here, 40.1 uh, 40 let's say, uh, we have 3,223 meters per second. And then once again, I'm going to lock that. I had to type the numbers in. And we will put the fairings on. Of course, we didn't get the number with the fairings. That would be silly. All right, so it's actually 108 tons being delivered to orbit. And that's another good thing about locking these and trying to get the whole thing to orbit all the US. Well, we should not count the fairings. Actually, those are suspiciously light fairings. So the low Earth orbit capacity is 105 tons, let's say. And that's what we're going for here. Which is about the same as Block 1B, by the way. One other change I made was slightly underfueling the shuttle mice in terms of their RCS. Uh, that's down to like 9... Um, no, let me get the number thing off. 80%, I think. 80% of their previous MMH and NTO load. Which is fine. Um, their MMH and NTO load could de would be enough to deorbit the core as well, the core tank, before they decouple. Anyway, 
Uh, let us save right there and try 40 tons. Okay, so we are currently reading 9,097 meters per second for reference. Our thrust weight ratio at sea level has gone up by 0.01. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. All right, so throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. And I don't know which way around the roll wants to be. I'll just let it go ahead and roll. And we can see as we approach booster decoupling time that we are at Mach 3.8 and I'm gonna shut down those engines and separate. So as expected we're going around those kinds of speeds and I we want heat shielding commensurate with SR-71 style stuff not all the HRSI heat tiles and everything. Oh, I should have released the fairings a little bit earlier. Uh, I hope that doesn't hurt too much. Okay, it doesn't look perfect here. I think the problem was not decoupling the fairings on time. Uh, a little bit short, but you know what? They could probably come down from there. And it'd be a good thing for them to do that. Uh, oh. Yeah, I don't know why that's self-destructs, but, um, no, these can definitely go. Oh, the fuel's locked, shoot. And they retracted, and I didn't need them to retract like that. And, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, so in orbit with 3,130 meters per second, and that might be enough to transfer to the moon with 40 tons. It's close. It's pretty close. I'll, I'll do a brief... It is already suborbital. We'll do a brief check of the engine mice. So on a previous video, somebody mentioned that... Uh, oh, they're a little bit jittery... I don't know what that's about. Am I controlling from the mouse? It seems like I'm controlling from a mouse. This mouse. Okay. I'm going to throttle down. Get off of this thing. Okay, let me make sure I'm controlling from here. Can we get off of this thing now? Apparently we were a little bit too close, but I think maybe time warping will help. Yeah. Okay. So, surface. Roll zero. 40 pitch. And we really need to... We were carrying 379 meters per second. We can definitely fuel these less. That's if they needed to completely deorbit. And deorbit the tank as well. Since they don't need to. We can probably underfuel them and that would get them to orbit. And ironically, then we would need the fuel to help deorbit that tank. It's so complicated. I would certainly rather be coming down with less fuel. But maybe it's okay. Uh, well, let's run the thrusters a little bit. Shut down the SSMEs. We don't need that. And so I'm running the thrusters just so that we can and we've got two kilonewton thrusters here four of them and that's just to mitigate how steep the trajectory is oh i think uh i thought i had tucked those ssmes in more but then again this is better now it depends i don't know if they're gonna be heat shielded well enough like this oh gosh darn it uh, i think uh during the live stream test i had them tucked in all the way so that the edge of them was basically at this lip. Of course, that somewhat threatens these, but then this, you know, visually heat tiled. These aren't, though. Okay, we are at 90 kilometers, and 
we're slowing down fairly well now. Pitch, roll, and yaw are fairly well contained. It's gonna be dark when we actually land though. That's a little bit sad. Oh, we've got some overheating. It's on one of the little thrusters out of all things. Oh, I, I sort of remember that being a problem. Still, there's no good reason why the thruster should be exposed. But at least its loss won't throw us off very much. And we're probably gonna lose it though. Really shouldn't. Could tuck them in a little bit better. 71 kilometers. We're decelerating very well. This is a good speed to be at at this point. So yeah, I mean, it must be feeling like it's explo exposed to the airflow somehow, though I don't know why the one on the opposite side symmetrically didn't also have the same problem. That's just the decoupler sticking out. Heck, that should have blown before the thruster did. No problems losing that. No, oh, but engine overheating I don't want to see. Yeah, uh, 60 kilometers, still slowing down very nicely. Roll, yaw, and pitch, well controlled. Another possibility is we could have used the thrusters to get into a full orbit and then deorbit. We certainly had enough delta V for that. So that would have gotten us better at Cape, that gotten us to Cape Canaveral a little bit better. And that's probably why I packed that much fuel, come to think of it. I'm going to try to figure out when to pitch down, which we will need to do. Though, pitch, roll, and yaw are very well controlled still. And now we primarily see our craft by the glow of the engines. <laughs> in the overheating indicator light. Okay, 30 kilometers in Mach 5 now. Yeah, I'm very pleased by how well the little shell mice handle. 24 kilometers, Mach 2.7. But their, their landing speed is a little bit weird. And I, I think it's because of this portion of the wing that's molded into the body. I don't know if FAR is counting that properly. So... I think it's sort of missing out on that. The rest is procedural wings, so... Oh, and maybe this back plate too. I don't know how well it's calculating the body at all. It loses speed so fast too. Oh, oh no, I think we've stalled. Uh, well, we're upside down now. <laughs> Going down a little bit fast. Uh, Maybe atmospheric autopilot? We'll see. It doesn't always like shuttles very much. But it is letting me pull up properly. I don't know what that curve down there is. Okay, now keep going down though. Not, not too fast. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that curved line. I'll just go by my instruments. I can't see anything else properly. I'm pretty sure we're over water. Hmm. You can see the angle of attack we're holding right now. That's not a good sign. And once again, I think I've stalled out. And... Ooh. So yeah, the the concluding aerodynamics could do with some work, and maybe I should just take off the wing bits that I put on and in uh, in the model itself, and just use B9 procedural wings all the way. That might be a safer thing to do. I think it'd get more lift like that. It was stalling at way too high a speed to be able to land on a runway, and so that's not good. Anyway, but this was about the Raptor flyback boosters, which we haven't tested the landing off yet, but I think 
would operate better than this, uh, uh, the, the stall speed should be much lower and manageable. The question is just where to land it at. You know, if we launch from Cape Canaveral, can we land it in the Bahamas? I don't know. But you saw the performance of it, and I think it's pretty good. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.